Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, I'll call the meeting to order. It is May 25th, 2021. Uh, commissioners present, myself, Natasha Yakovlev, and Helen Kahn. And I just want to announce also that this meeting is being recorded. Is there anyone present for public comment? Nope. Seeing as there's none, we will move on to item number three. <coughs> on an application for change of stock interest and change of manager on an annual all alcohol package store license. Annie, do we have anybody here for that item? Yes, Michael Gold here. Hi there. Wine, table and vine. Hi, thank you Hi. for coming. Um, could you just state your name again for the record? Sure, Michael Gold. And do you wanna just tell us a little bit about the reason you're here today? Sure. Um, so we have uh, two, two requests here. We're seeking approval of our application for a change of manager for our section 15 license at 136 North King Street it's inside the Big Y supermarket. This is for Table and Vine. And uh, approval for a change of stock ownership in Big Y resulting from the owner's gifting of non-voting shares to trust for the benefit of their children. So start with the uh, change of manager, Dominic uh, Fortini. He's on the line here too. Um, Dominic's our new manager. Hopefully all the paperwork that we submitted to you guys is in order. Dominic's been a manager in the Big Y system for about 10 years, I think. He's been a store director for us for about three years. He was transferred to Northampton uh, late in 2020, you know, of course, during COVID. And as I'm sure you've seen, if you've shopped our stores, Dominic, runs a great store. He's an asset to the community. He has a responsible server certification, many years of experience managing the sales of alcoholic beverages at retail. And as I mentioned, he's on this Zoom call here if you have any questions for him. Okay. Annie, all the um, paperwork for that portion was in order, right? It looks like Yes, and I'm sorry, you're going to have to open a public hearing too and just make sure there's no public comment. Okay, should I do that now or wait? Until... Now? Yep. Okay, I'll make a motion to open a public hearing. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there anyone here uh, to make public comment about this agenda item? Hearing none, I will make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carry on. <laughs> Annie, will we need a public hearing for the second portion of this as well? No, so it's all it's all in one. Okay. Okay, perfect. Um, Helen, did you have any questions for Dominic? Uh, no, I don't. I, yeah, I, I looked through the paperwork and it looks like it's all there and all in order. So yep. I don't have any questions. I do not have any questions either. Um, and do you want to move on then to the stock portion of what we need to know about that? Sure. I'll try to, it's a little complicated. I'll try to keep it somewhat brief. Okay. So um, so Table and Vine is a wholly owned subsidiary of Big Y Foods. It's effectively our liquor division. And we're seeking a, an application for a change in stock ownership that in Big Y that resulted from the owner's gifting of a small amount of their non-voting shares to trust for the benefit of their adult children management, the operations of Big Y and Table and Vine are totally unchanged by these transactions. Um, hopefully you got the six inches of paperwork that was required for this and it was all in order. Um, I will note that because this transaction was complicated and uh, very complicated given the minor uh, changes that occurred and, and because Table and Vine has multiple retail licenses throughout the state, we worked with the ABCC to do what they call a reverse transaction approval. So the ABCC has already approved this subject, of course, to your local licensing authority approval. Okay. Helen, do you have any questions? No, I don't. I do not either. Everything is in perfect order. Um, I will make a motion then to approve the application for change of stock interest as well as the change of manager on the annual all alcohol package store license for Table and Vine Incorporated at 136 North King Street. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
And I'm just going to do a quick roll call, uh, Natasha. Yes. And Helen. Yes. Thank you for coming. Okay. Thank you. Have a nice day. You too. Have a good day. Thanks. Okay. Moving on to item number four. Review and public approval of the following on-premises outdoor dining expansion applications for public spaces. Azad Bharat Incorporated DBA India House Restaurant at 45 State Street and Fortune Creative LLC DBA Oriental Taste at 41 Main Street. Um, can we hear from India House first, please? Uh, my name is Om Prakash Kanojia. I'm the owner of India House Restaurant. Thank you. And can you tell us a little bit about your plans? Uh, uh, you know, uh, the three parking space what we uh, the city has grant, uh, granted us in front of the restaurant. We just want to put a uh, uh, portable type of structure in uh, putting some cover on the top so people can sit inside. Uh, so that's the only thing is. Okay. And you'll be, um, your servers will be carrying alcohol over the sidewalk to get to that space. Yes. Yes, please. Okay. And do you have, so has the city put the barriers down or are you putting your own barriers? No, the city is putting a barriers on it. Okay. Yep, so that's happening um, Monday for India House and Oriental Taste. Okay. And what hours of operation will you be using the outdoor space? Uh, from three o'clock uh, three, uh, three o'clock till nine or 10 o'clock in the evening. Okay. All right. And Annie, do they, when they're in the, um, I'm sure this has come up at this point, but when they're using the site, the parking spots, do they need delineation from the curb point? Yeah, I mean, nothing crazy, um, but at something just so people don't wander from the sidewalk right into the, the dining area. Okay. Does that make sense that we'll need, yeah. you need some sort of roping yeah. or something? Yeah. Yeah, that, that we already is, uh, have planned to do that. Perfect. Great. Helen, do you have any questions? No, I mean, I guess I'm just curious about the construction of the, so you're building something, so there'll be a roof basically. It, this area. Yeah, you know, if you look at it, there's a lot of the thing like in New York and Boston. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, the people have built up, that is a, like a, a, is a, not a permanent structure. Mm -hmm. It is just there, so it will. Uh, one thing it it will protects the uh, uh, the people from the uh, rainy season and all that thing. People, we can use that, you know, mm -hmm. and it will look nice too, you know. Just under the barrier, if you put the tables and all those things, you know, it is uh, it not that. Uh, so we are like, if you look at it, in uh, always our outside dining, we create like, with the plants and all those things, nice atmosphere, so people can feel little pleasant there you know <laughs> that is the uh, our thing is you know so once we will put it up like that we will put some plants and all those things in there so people will be feeling a little more okay i actually was in new york city recently and was I was very impressed with all those outdoor dining spaces yeah and was glad that we don't have that kind of traffic so close to where people are eating here in northampton but <laughs> that way um all right, great. Well, I look forward to seeing it. Okay, great. Um, can we hear from Oriental Taste? Oh, sorry, I, I guess I didn't. Um, you can um, approve yeah, these definitely. separately. Oh, okay, great. Helen, do you want to do that one? Yes, sure. So I will uh, um, make a motion to approve um, the on-premises outdoor dining expansion um, for India House, and I'm trying to remember all the caveats, sorry, Annie, that I go along with this, and including transportation across the sidewalk of alcohol, transportation of alcohol across the sidewalk and subject to approval by the building department. Is that correct? Did I do that right? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, subject uh, to a site inspection by the building department prior to operating. Yes, exactly, exactly what I said. <laughs> I heard it. <laughs> it must. I must have been breaking up over the Zoom. You must. 
<laughs> I'll second that motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And just roll call, Natasha. Yes. And Helen. Yes. Thank you very much for coming. Good luck. Look forward to seeing it. It sounds like it'll be beautiful. Thank you very Thank you. much. Okay, moving on to Oriental Taste. So we have somebody here. Yeah. Hi there. Could you state your name for the record, please? Yeah, my name's Sing Nguyen. Uh, I'm from Pho Boston. Oh, uh, she's, I think she's actually from Pho Boston, yeah. which is- You're in a few more agenda items. So stay, stay with us for a few more minutes. Okay. Thank you. Um, so Mr. Zhang, I've talked to him a few times today and he said he would be here. So maybe we sh can just give him a few more and skip to the next item. Okay. We'll pause. We will move on then to item number five, the application for change of manager on an annual wine and malt package store license for JW Sandry Incorporated, DBI Sandry number 130 at 776 North King Street. Do we have somebody here? Anybody? In I think the it's uh, Mr. Mr. Williams. Yeah, okay, there you are, hello. Can you state your name for the record, please? I think he's muted still. There we go. How about now? There you go. Here you okay. go. <laughs> uh, William Williams. Nice to meet you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about your change of manager? Uh, I am the one that they're trying to put onto the license. Okay. Uh, the previous person that was on there left the company. Okay. I have I've been with the company at that location for about five and a half years. Okay. Annie, everything's in order for the application? Yes, I have everything. Okay. Can I bring one thing to your attention? Sure. On the agenda, you have the store number is 130 and it's 139. Okay. You know, I have conflicting records and no fault of my own. They just old records and I couldn't decide whether it was 130 or 139. So thank you for clarifying. Okay, it's 139. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Ellen, do you have any questions? I do not. Neither do I. Then I will make a motion to approve the application for a change of manager and an annual wine and malt package store license for JW Sandry store number 139 at 776 North King Street. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Thank you. Has uh, Oriental Taste arrived yet? No. Okay, item number six. Application for a transfer of ownership on a common Victor license for Trin Corporation DBA Fa Boston at 311 Riverside Drive, Florence. Now we're ready for you. Yeah. Could you Thank just you. say your hand for the record? Uh, yeah, my name is Ting Nguyen. Okay. Uh, we just changed the, the name for the ownership, everything the same thing. All right. So, Annie, we have everything. Do you, um, do you mind just spelling your name for the record? Uh, T-R-I-N-S, the first name, the last name, Nguyen, N-G-U-Y-E-N. Okay, thank you. Helen, do you have any questions? Um, no, it looks like all the paperwork is here, so yep. straightforward. All right. Would you like to make this motion? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve the application for transfer of ownership on a common VIC license for um, Trin Corporation DBA for Boston at 311 Riverside Drive in Florence. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Tasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Have a good day. All right, item number seven, application for extension of premises for Think Tank Brewers LLC DBA Progression Brewing to be included in the Strong Avenue closure for outdoor dining. And we have, hi there, can you state your name for the record? Hi, Andrew Starkweather, how are y'all? 
Good, how are you? Thank you for coming. So the food, pr the provision of food has been lifted. As of the 29th, correct. Exciting. Um, we're, getting, we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> Um, Annie, what do we need to discuss so far as this is concerned? Because this is the first sort of pop-up situation we'll have. Yeah, I, I would I would just get a quick rundown from Drew to see what, what he's planning for. What's your plan, Drew? Okay. Um, we're planning on putting together a, a beer tap trailer um, that would be securable uh, at night uh, versus having to move things back and forth daily. Um, Parking the trailer there, as the diagram shows, having someone there at all times, um, serving, monitoring alcohol, et cetera. Um, having a number of smaller, more um, either bar height tables or, you know, sort of 24 inch tables and chairs out there since there won't be a food accompanying. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's really just going to be a little, little beer garden um, surrounded by a lot of other lovely restaurants. Uh, plan to be to, not sure where we go seven days a week, but to have the option um, is a pretty simple, straightforward operation. Um, the one question um, is electricity. Um, and I had put in there the check yes to the possible noise disturbance. Um, if we're unable to secure electricity to power the refrigeration, um, looking at a Honda generator, which I guess run decibel levels of 52 to 58, it's pretty much uh, speaking voice, as I understand it. Um, so that's probably the one, the biggest obstacle for us is power. Right. And I know that um, Amy, um, we've had some conversations, uh, we've talked about light post possibilities. Um, a rumor. Yeah, but I don't know how that would all work to turn on one light post all the time or something. So. <laughs> There's a magic switch. <laughs> I just click. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's what we're trying to, uh, we're trying to do. And how big is this refrigerated thing? Like how I'm just trying to picture with, um, so east side will be set up outside of that restaurant. So you'd sort of be like on the end of that whole enclosure off of the ramp there. Yeah, I don't know, Annie. I, Sorry, I yeah, did I not send you the drawing? I don't know how to pop up a screen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to visualize it. If this is, is this the drawing you mean? Uh, yes, okay. so you, it gets cut off there, truncated the, yeah. on the right hand side, that's the rear end of a it's sort of like a cargo trailer. Okay. Uh, I think that's a, a 12 foot diagram. Um, and we would put, you know, it would either be clean white or silver with eventually some progression logos on it or something. But um, yeah. Okay. We would then set up some sort of uh, service station in front of it just to be able to set people's beers down, do transactions, but probably just a table or a framed wooden right Helen, do you have questions um no and i guess the like the way it would be you're iding people as they come to the trailer basically to be served is that sort of the yes for that okay yeah. and the exact same way that we would do here when people come in right um, right um I'm just I'm just curious if this will happen just because you know this is the first time you've done this and with all these different um, eateries and such. I don't know if there's an agreement or or not. Like if someone wants to purchase food at local burger and then go sit at Progression, and I I don't know if this is a discussion for us to have or not. I'm just sort of curious how that would work or not work, or if there's some kind if that's some kind of violation to do that. I mean I know certainly can't get a beer at Progression and then walk down the street with it, but um. But I don't know about sort of like the sharing food kind of thing. Um, we haven't directly discussed that, but um, I mean, we certainly wouldn't have an issue with someone coming and sitting with their burger and having a beer. Um, you're 100% correct. We can't let people leave our perimeter with alcohol. 
um, nor would we want to interfere with the livelihood of the other restaurants serving their alcohol. Right. Yeah. So I don't know if that's something, Amy, I don't know, I don't know how that all gets negotiated or if that's something that we're involved in saying you can or can't, or if it's sort of beyond our purview because it's about bringing food into a different establishment. Does anyone know? Am I just complicating things here? <laughs> I mean, uh, I'd say that you guys have, you guys control the alcohol and let the food food be left up to the health department because they're the ones that issue the food service establishment permits and regulate kitchens and stuff like that so I mean I can certainly discuss it with them but I, I don't think it I don't think it's under your authority to decide whether food can be moved right, right. back and forth okay and everyone will have their own delineations of their space so it'll you know, in terms of the alcohol component, it should be obvious to the customers. I yeah. would think that they can't travel. Yeah. Right. And I, I remember in the beginning when we proposed or when this project was proposed, there was an internal city meeting and it, one of the one of the health department's worries was making it more like a beer garden and having everyone kind of mulling around instead of having separate sections table service, et cetera. It okay. seems, seems like the way this has gone is individual liquor licenses, licenses divided by their own perimeters instead of anything in, anything goes inside the, the larger perimeter. Yes, yes, everyone, yes. everything, everyone, everyone has their own space. Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess it's, I'm, yeah. Open. Right. I mean, certainly with the alcohol, I get it. And I think it'll be very strict and delineated, I, I guess, because you're sort of the odd man out, so to speak, and that you're not serving food. I don't know if it's a decision you have to make about, and I know beyond our purview, just a curious citizen, um, you know, about people bringing food into that space, or maybe that's a health department thing too, you know, to have with their beer and where it comes from and if that matters. But not for not for us to, to worry about of just bringing it up this long. Right. <laughs> all right okay so i know there's there's been some question about um a little spacing and how many i don't know if there's been a question of how many people can this contain but it's um it's certainly feeling like want to throw out there that um unfortunately everybody in town can't participate in this and mm -hmm. there's a level of viability that um, um, if you don't have enough seats and you have to have someone there all the time, there's a certain amount of you know um, seats you need to have to make it work. Um, so I know there's been some question about other people in town joining in and things, and um, just sort of want to put on the record that there's to keep it, bear in mind that there is only a certain amount of viable space there. Um, so not to complicate things. Yeah. Yeah, it's a small, it's it's too bad we can't do the whole street and shut it down, but. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, but we'll work with what we have, I guess. Next year. Yeah, next year. <laughs> Amy, take note. <laughs> um, I don't have other questions. Annie, is there something else that we should be thinking about or asking about? Um, well, so will it be table service? Um, this would not be table service um, because the food requirement lifting right. go back to um, like we do in our tap room. People come up and they they order and we give them their beer and they go back to their table. Um, there will be, I mean, we'll certainly be busting and cleaning and things like that. But this so would you'll be requiring them to sit after they get their drinks. Yes. Yeah. Um, I've, unless I'm mistaken, the table service is required still, but my impression was that table services. Yeah, no, I, I guess I just, I just, I'm trying to work it out through in my head and I just. Yeah, we would, we would create a, a flow system as people come up and order. So separation could be maintained. They get their beers and they go to their table, um, alleviating, you know, congregations and too many people in a small area, for instance. I mean, um, so yeah, I guess the only other thing would be hours, and um, I guess you're not going to be transporting on the sidewalk since it's 
your cart is going to be, is it going to stay there from Memorial Day to Labor Day? That is the plan. Um, our, our backup plan, there wouldn't be any transport of open container. Um, we've just started to explore trailers and there seems to be a long lead time. The only, the backup plan would be that we would bring unopened cans of beer, open them as they're ordered, um, and then probably bring them back to the brewery at night, which is not ideal for us to run smoothly, but um, there would be no transport. We'll be in the middle of the street, so we won't be crossing sidewalks. Okay. Helen, do you have a question? Yeah, and you, you did say the hours, you said maybe not seven days a week, because I know we put some kind of limitation on the hours for everyone in this area, right? Last I time, I think we did. I was trying to recall what last time was, and I put down noon to 10. Was it 10 that things were up? I believe it was 10 on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it was 11. Okay. Well, if I could amend my application to just do the, the Friday, Saturday to 11, I'm not sure we'll stay open, but to have the option would be beneficial. So Friday, Saturday to 11, and then every other day would be We'll do 10. Right, in keeping with everyone else's hours. And I don't know if you can answer this question, Drew. Um, if you can't, Annie probably can, but what has the outreach been to the residential folks on that chunk of Strong? Does anybody know? I've heard some conversations about it, but I am I'm not personally. Amy probably has a better idea. Can I talk? Um, uh, Deb has gone and reached out to, there's a condo association that controls much of that. Um, she's talked to their condo president who has um, raised it at one of their condo meetings. So okay. that block is aware. And then I think there are separate apartments that are above um, like fitness together. Yep. A couple of those are separate. And I'm told that Deb has reached out to them as well. I don't know whether that was just in person or was something in the mail, but that big condo stretch, she's, she went to the condo president and the and a meeting. Okay, thank you. All right, is there anything else, Annie or Helen? No, I think we covered it. Are you ready to approve, Helen? I am. Do you want um, to make a Yes. Thank you. Thank you, just looking at where that is. <laughs> Uh, oh, I would like to make a motion to approve the application for extension of premises for Think Tank Brewers LLC DBA Progression Brewing to be included in the Strong Avenue closure for outdoor dining, I guess, subject to site inspection by the building department. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, and Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great. Thank you, Drew. Good luck. Thank you very much. Have, have a great day. Fun yeah. and interesting. <laughs> um, Mr. Zhang, I believe, is here. So oh, wonderful. Okay, we're just going to scoop back then to agenda item number four, the review and approval of the on-premise outdoor dining expansion and application for Fortune Creative LLC DBA Oriental Taste at 41 Main Street. Could we have the representative for that restaurant speak, please? Your name for the record. Mr. Zhang, can you hear us? He looks, he's still on mute. Are you able to yeah. unmute him, Annie? I, I can ask him to unmute. Okay. There okay. he is. Perfect. Oh. Mr. Zhang, if you could just unmute yourself. There should be a button in the bottom left hand of your screen. Perfect. Great. Okay, thank you. Hi, thank you. Could you state your name for the record, please? Yeah, my name is yeah, the restaurant is the Fortune Create and the DBA is the Oriental Taste. 
Yeah, I'm praying for an expansion space in a street, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we already have the approved from the city in uh, two seat uh, in the sidewalk. And now we need a little bit more space in the street, yeah. Okay, so the city's dropping off or has dropped off the barriers. Ah, uh -huh. I think I so appreciate it, yeah. Okay. And I'm looking at your picture. Do you want to just talk us through? You're going to put, looks like four tables out there. Yeah, four tables, maybe less, less than four tables, probably, yeah. Okay. And um, you weren't here earlier, but we were talking to India House about making sure there was a delineation, some sort of roping or something at the curb, the curb to the dining so that uh, you yeah, we can't venture in since you'll be serving alcohol. Uh, we, we, we won't be serving the alcohol in the outside. Yeah. Oh, you won't be serving alcohol? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. We, we would like to serve the alcohol in the inside though, yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So that changes things, I guess. So there's going to be no alcohol outside? No alcohol outside, yeah. Okay. Well. I mean, you're allowed to. I'm just. You're allowed to. You're allowed to. That's what we can approve today, if you're interested in that. Yeah, if if we can pass for if customer really like outside, I think uh, it should be yeah. But uh, we we encourage the customer have a drink inside. Yeah. Okay, I mean, Natasha, Helen, it's I mean, I mean, it's, it makes I think if all of the the pieces are in place for the outdoor dining then mm -hmm. we should approve the option for them to have alcohol outside if they decide to change their mind since we're all here yeah uh, yeah if it can be outside i think it should be it should be better yeah yeah no you can definitely do it outside just as long as you have a delineation there has to be some sort of barrier it can be a simple rope or something uh -huh that keeps the tables. Okay, that sounds great, yeah. Yeah, tables on the sidewalk, clearly not accessible by people walking through, and the same is true for the tables that are in the- Okay, yeah, yeah, I, I will do, yeah, okay. Okay, um, Helen, do you have questions? Right, and then also isn't the second thing that you just need to have a clear view or someone posted outside if you have people drinking outside. Is that- um, That's accurate? actually- Or is that? That was part of the governor's order that he released some of those restrictions. Oh, okay. I mean, he will have to have someone outside to, well, since he, since it's right in front of his, his restaurant, he's okay. Um, but he will have to have someone outside cleaning tables and, and stuff like that in between each use. Okay. Okay. Then are we ready for a motion? I think so. Okay. I'll do this one because I took notes after you did it so well. <laughs> I will approve the um, on-premise, I make a motion to approve the on-premise outdoor dining expansion application for public spaces for Fortune Creative LLC DBA Oriental Taste, 41 Main Street. And this includes the transportation of alcohol over the sidewalk and is subject to a site inspection by the building department prior to opening. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And how, uh, Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yeah. Thank you. That's great. Thank you, Thank Mr. Zhang. Great. Thank you for coming. Thank you for supporting. Thank you very much. Yeah. Great. Okay. Hmm. Item number eight update on the status of the pocket license for the World War II Veterans Association of Hampshire County Incorporated. Hmm. Annie, do we have somebody here for that? We do. Okay. And whoever's here to speak, state their name for the record, please. Um, Steve Connor. I'm the uh, president of the World War II Veterans Association of Hampshire County. Thank you for coming. And, and, I'm, Matthew, and I'm Matthew Tebow. I'm the treasurer for the organization. Great. Thank you. Um, Annie, are, do you have a status or they're giving us the status? They are giving one. Okay. I do not have anything. We're ready. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah. Um, so we um, had a board meeting last night. We have 
two potential buyers. Um, we have decided on one from the board. We just have to go and execute that. But it is a group that um, had a beer and wine license in downtown and they're interested in ours. Um, so it hasn't been solidified yet, but the offer has been made and the board last evening accepted it. Do you have a timeline for when a purchase contract will be signed? Um, last communication I had was we are looking to, on both sides of this, um, have this completed by uh, between now and July, the latest. Is the current timeline that I'm hearing or my, I'm understanding. Um, Helen, do you have any questions? Yes, not. I mean, I, that's good news. Um, and and I don't know if our next steps are just keep us informed. And if you know, I don't know if we need to say if it doesn't happen by the end of July, something or other. <laughs> but, can I uh, ask? Can I can yeah. I ask a question on that? Absolutely. Um, I'm understanding um, the rules uh, to be. Um, you know, uh, um, typically that pocket license is six months, extensions, COVID, one year. Um, middle to end of July, I don't have the exact date, would pull us up to that year. If for whatever reason, um, there's something that pushes us a couple of weeks past that is, um, I mean, aside from keeping you guys in the loop and letting you know what's going on, are there additional steps that we would need to take to, you know, work to get the extra two weeks, 30 days, whatever it is? I think it's the communication piece. Okay. Is that true, Annie, or is there some other? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think. I mean, this is this is good news, um, and we we want you to make the sales. So, I mean, I think it. Of course, it's up to you guys. But my suggestion would be just keep communicating, and you would give them the time that they need to make the sale happen. For me. Sounds good to us. That's great. Sounds good. Congratulations. Yeah, so just we'll, we'll assume the timeline's end of July. If that changes, let us know as soon as you know. Very good. And we'll just take it from there. Thank you very much for coming. Great. And Annie, we'll connect with you on anything that we need to do to actually okay. transfer it over. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you, Matthew. Nice to see you. Okay, final item, I believe, item number nine, discuss next steps for the all alcohol liquor license for Rias Bashas LLC, DBA, Ibiza Tapas. And Annie, you have um, an attorney Seawald update. Well, yes, I um, sent you guys the answers to the questions you had asked. Um, and now, so if you want to proceed with what you were talking about at the last meeting, um, I guess Jeremy would have to understand that there would be a lapse of time that you wouldn't have the license because in order to, if the license commission is gonna take it back and then allow you to apply to transfer it as Homestead, then you'd have to give us the license back in order for there to be a license that you can apply for. And then the ABCC would have to take their time to review it. So there would be a lapse that you wouldn't have a license at all. What is the usual ABCC, ABCC time frame? I mean, it's it's anywhere from a few weeks to a few months. Um, my experience in COVID is that they've been moving quicker than usual. Um, so <laughs> go figure. I so um, I would say, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know, I, I can't say, because it's, it's it all depends if, if everything's in order, then they could approve it. If not, they'd have to come back and get more information from us. So it there's a lot of factors that determine how long. And for wine and malt, we handle that approval locally. No. Oh, that also goes to them. Yeah. And if he were to apply for, if Homes, DB, if LLC, whatever, DBA, Homestead were to apply for the wine and malt, 
that process could start at any time. Uh, can you can you ask? Can you? I, I don't understand the question. So I'm just wondering if how to prevent a several month long potential lapse if he were to apply for a wine and malt license early before the his the current Ibiza tapas license is given back to the city and then that application process start is there a way to do do one first and then the second later yeah i believe he can apply for a wine and mall and then he would just have to surrender it when he was approved for the wine and mall he'd have to surrender the all alcohol yep Yeah, that's what I was. Yeah, might be seamless. I don't. Uh, yeah, I, I I would want to ask the ABCC about that before. I just wouldn't want them to see like, oh, you're applying for a wine and mall, and then a week later you're applying for a special act, all alcohol. Like, what's going on? You know, I I wouldn't want them to it to raise any feathers with them. Um, I mean, the, the other, I mean, because obviously it's not an ideal time to do this with the strong app project, et cetera. So, I mean, if you're just a suggestion, if you were willing to, <clears throat> to let them continue for a few more months and say, do this in the fall or the early winter, then handle it then. Um, so I guess those are some options. Your thoughts, Helen? Um, yeah, I mean, I think we're sort of going the direction of trying to do whatever we can to make this a smooth transition, so that might make sense. Um, but so just so I, well, yeah, okay. What you said makes sense. I mean, no matter what, there's there has to be this lapse. So for example, the people, yeah, because, okay, I get it, sorry. I mean, lapse is an <laughs> ideal, it out my <laughs> obviously it's not ideal, but it would, it would remove this cloud over Jeremy's head mm -hmm. for years to come. So, I mean, a few months, I don't even, I don't, I don't, I don't think it would be a few months because he's already had a license. So they probably wouldn't need to come out and do an inspection. Cause usually if it's a new license, if no one's had one before, they'll usually send an investigator out to like check it out, but he already has one. So that wouldn't be needed. Um, so I, I wouldn't, I don't think it would be more than a month and a half. I, I don't want to say, but I don't think it would be long. I mean, I'm sure it sure would feel long without a liquor license, but I, I don't, yeah. I mean, is there anything, I mean, does it hurt or help? I can't imagine. I mean, the ABCC will know what's happening, correct? I mean, it's not like we're trying to pull a fast one. I mean, I don't know if there's something that, you know, a letter saying this is what's happening. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I usually approval because they already have had a liquor. If letter. it's not a standard transaction, I always send a cover letter explaining the transaction, just letting them know. Yeah. And there's usually one investigator for Northampton, and he's we're we're in communication, so it, he's I wouldn't see any issues with it. Would it make sense to? prep them that this is happening in the nearer future than later? Um, what uh, what part would, what part? Like the whole wine and malt thing or the lapse or what? Well, kind of all of it. I'm just wondering if, if since to, to Jeremy's benefit, he's already got a license, so he's not gonna necessarily require the usual attention from the ABCC in terms of that application process. If the if the local locally assigned investigator knows what's coming, they can't anticipate it and maybe it won't take the month and a half or longer once the process starts. Yeah, I mean I could probably I could reach out to him and just let him know. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I mean applying for a for the new special act license isn't an out of ordinary transaction for the right. ABCC. Okay. So. All right. So we wait until the end of the event. So, like, you mean at the end of when? The strong half. I mean, if it can't be seamless, then 
we can't, I don't see the point. And I mean, it just seems counterintuitive to what we're also trying to accomplish here. <laughs> you what, know, doing it now. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Yep. Okay. Um, so is there, I mean, I guess, Jeremy, um, is there sort of a preferred time? And I don't know how we leave this. We just say to be determined at a later date, but I guess if we have some idea of. Yeah, I mean, if you want, we can, you can instruct me to put an agenda, an item on the agenda for the first or the September meeting and we can pick it up there or, I mean, I mean, nothing can happen until Jeremy physically returns the license to the city. And at that point, he can apply for the new license. Because there's, I mean, there's nothing to apply for unless he gives us the license back. Yes. Can I apply for the uh, malt and wine license before returning the all alcohol license? Or do I have to return? No, you can apply for it. And then when you are granted approval for the wine and malt, then you would surrender the all alcohol, which, which just happened with India House because India House got that the special act lottery license and they had a wine and malt. Um, so yes, you could you could do that. But again, if you, if you are going to go that route, I would definitely want to talk to the ABCC to make sure that wouldn't cause any issues. Sure. Amy. I'm just wondering if it would make sense to do some sort of motion or something to memorialize what the plan is so there's not like an amorphous three months hanging out there where it's just, it feels a little um, uneasy for me and I know I have no stake in this, but I don't know if there's an appropriate motion or something to just solidify the plan. Well, I don't know if we can do that, if it's a discussion item on the already posted agenda, but uh, I kind of also feel like we've given this so much attention. None of us are going anywhere in the next three months, no, no, no. <laughs> three or four months, and this has been an issue on our minds for a long time. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's no um, vote on the agenda. It was really just a discussion, so I think we should keep it at that, but I'm gonna record this discussion yeah. probably most likely word for word. So everyone's thoughts will be recorded. Yeah, and this, we, we didn't come to this um, decision. You know, it all kind of came out with, you know, Helen, Helen got it going at the last meeting and sort of put into um, the public purview what our thoughts have been and uh, I feel I don't, I trust us. I feel confident that the plan that we've talked about and Annie's um, communication with the ABCC will bring us where we need to get in a few months time. I, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, it's been a long road to get here. Not an easy road for you, so. <laughs> Not us, I'm sure. Yeah. No. I, I do appreciate it. It means a lot. Thank you. Sure. Um, is, have we wrapped up that discussion? Is that the fastest discussion we've had wow. about this topic in the <laughs> history of its existence? Is there anything else, Annie, that we should be? There's nothing. I I I don't have anything else. I didn't know if Attorney Shin wanted to say anything. No, I just uh, I just really appreciate uh, everyone from the board. I think it's amazing what you're trying to do for a small business owner, and it's so refreshing. And uh, I just thank you so much. It's it's great to see. I'm glad we can do it. Okay. All right. Um, is there any new business? Uh, there's approval of minutes is next. Oh, okay. I only. I'm sorry, I missed a sheet on the. Agenda. That's okay. What months are we doing? March 3rd and April 7th. And we can't, Brian was here for both? Brian was here for both, but you guys are a quorum. Oh, so. okay. Yeah. Okay, then I'll make a motion to, Helen, did you read the minutes? You did. Yes. Yeah. I will make a motion to approve the March and April minutes. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Any new business? I have none. Okay. Not for me. Excellent. Me neither. Then I'll make a motion to close the meeting. Uh, second. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye.